O3 Mini is here and ahead of schedule too. It wasn't originally planned until February, but since DeepSeek took the spotlight all of last week, as we all know, and people started thinking to themselves, hmm, should I cancel my OpenAI subscription now that DeepSeek is just as good and free? OpenAI wasn't gonna have none of that, so they rushed to reassert their dominance, releasing O3 Mini and even making some of it for free for everybody. Another sign that when the tech overlords fight with each other, it's us consumers who get to benefit from it. Yay, capitalism! So today, we'll take a look at O3 Mini and see how it compares with DeepSeek on its design choices, its performance, its pricing, its safety, and a Python coding example. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Tam and I'm a machine learning engineer based in Silicon Valley. I previously worked for Apple on the Vision Pro and on robotic arms at a different company, particularly focusing on computer vision algorithms, basically using machine learning to enable these devices to understand what they're looking at. All right, here we are, O3 Mini. And as you see, its headline includes cost-effective reasoning. OpenAI is now playing the affordability game now to be able to compete with DeepSeek. As a reminder, this model was first announced in December during Shipmas, which was only a month ago, and now they're already releasing it. O3 Mini is especially good at the STEM fields, including math, science, and coding. You have three different options for the O3 Mini model, low, medium, or high, depending on how much effort you think a model will need to solve a problem. Now, I find this to be a strange design choice, because if the model is capable of reasoning, shouldn't it be able to reason to itself how much effort it needs to solve a particular problem? Why leave this in the hands of the human to decide, not the AI? Comparing this design choice with DeepSeek R1, DeepSeek uses a much more elegant approach to determining reasoning effort required. Their goal there is to simply solve the problem, independent of how much effort is required. If it's an easy problem, it'll naturally use less effort. If it's a hard problem, it'll naturally use a lot more effort. The training of the model was designed so that it could determine for itself. It could think for itself to think harder or not. So that's one critical design difference between O3 and R1. O3 Mini does not support vision capabilities, whereas O1 does support visual reasoning tasks. Another sign that O3 Mini was probably shipped a little sooner than expected, and so they couldn't ship both the language and vision capabilities all at once. All right, here we talk about who gets access to this new and advanced model. And the good news is everybody. Those on a paid subscription, the Plus team and Pro users have access to, to today already with three times as much of a rate limit as previously. And for the first time ever, users on the free plan also have access to a reasoning model. With this big change in attitude, this makes me think of two things. Either OpenAI could have been this generous from the get-go, or they're taking a big loss in order to keep their customers. All right, and O3, like O1, specializes in reasoning for STEM topics, which is all fine to specialize in something, but DeepSeek R1 has reason capabilities for both STEM topics and general purpose tasks. So its reason capabilities extend to everything. So I wonder if O3 got better at one thing while getting worse at another thing. In any case, we'll check out the benchmarks for the STEM fields. All right, let's take a look at our first benchmark, the Amy Competition Math one. Here we have the three different options for the O3 Mini model, low, medium, and high. And you can see that they have such a wide range in their performance. The high model does exceptionally well with a score that is nearly an A+. But then at that point, why would I use any of the other models? Important to point out here too, is that the O3 mini model does better than the full O1 model. And considering the gap between the O1 mini model and the O1 full model, I can only imagine what the performance of the O3 full model will be compared to this one here. Actually, that was part of the announcement by OpenAI back in December. The full O3 model gets a 96.7 on the same benchmark, basically 10 percentage points higher than this one, getting a near perfect score. All right, next benchmark, the PhD level science questions. Here, the range is a lot smaller and also being to par with the O1 full model. And again, as there is a performance gap between the O1 mini and the O1 full, the O3 mini will also have a performance gap with the O3 full, specifically 87.7 as they showed in their announcement video. All right, the Frontier Math Benchmark, which is a very interesting one because of the little drama surrounding it. But first, let's talk about the numbers. O1 Mini and O1 Full have around the same performance. No big difference there. But if you take a look at O3 Mini, the performance has essentially doubled, going from 5% to 9%, from 12% to 20%. 
And granted, 20% is not that high compared to the previous benchmark we just saw, but the Frontier Math benchmark is one of the hardest benchmarks out there, developed by some math geniuses. So it's kind of a good thing that this is low for the time being. As for the T surrounding this benchmark, well, it turns out their organizer, Epoch AI, had been accepting some hush-hush money from OpenAI without fully disclosing it. And this hush-hush money allowed OpenAI to get access to the Frontier benchmark data and use it as part of their training. So obviously, this is going to be an unfair advantage to keep that investor money flowing and make everyone else feel like they don't have a chance to keep up. So scandalous. All right, on the coding benchmark, O3 Mini is just getting better and better. Its lowest model performing to par with the O1 full model. So OpenAI has really cracked it out. So honestly, who even needs to hire any software engineers anymore? All right, next we get to safety, which I know, I know, you hear the word safety and you're like, yawn, but it really is important, especially as these models are getting smarter and more powerful. You really have to watch out that they're not one day gonna turn their backs on you. And so for that, O3 Mini has a system card, which is basically an entire 30 pages long detailing their safety checks and evaluations and basically showcasing how O3 Mini stacks up against the other models with regards to safety. Now, OpenAI has put extensive work into this, which is very real assuring to see. The same, however, I can't say for DeepSeek. I have yet to see a safety report card or a safety effort on their end, and I think that's something that we should continue to be wary about. Free and open source is great and all, but is it safe too? On the day of O3's announcement in December, OpenAI also released their method for making O3 much more safer, where they use a method called deliberative alignment. This is an overview of their method, and in my next video, I'll be doing a much more in-depth explanation of this diagram here. All right, now let's talk about pricing, money, the thing that makes the world go round. So let's take a look at O3 Mini's pricing and DeepSeek's pricing. All right, these two are basically the same thing, so we can just focus on the top one here. And for DeepSeek, we'll look at just the reasoner. So we're comparing 1 million tokens as input and output, and the same is done for OpenAI as well. DeepSeek has it at an astoundingly cheap price point at 14 cents, 55 cents, and $2. Now OpenAI is doing its very best to try to match that as much as possible. For the input tokens, it's only 10 times as much. For the cash input tokens, it's the same. And for the output tokens, it costs twice as much. So not bad, OpenAI, not bad. We see you trying, especially if you compare that with the pricing of their other reasoning models, like for the O1 full, where a million input tokens is $15. Cash is $7.50, and then output tokens is $60. So that's a huge difference. OpenAI already wasn't a revenue positive company, and now they have to keep even taking more and more losses. So this is really interesting. To be completely honest, it's quite fun to see these tech overlords just like competing with each other to see who can outbid each other and make the price even lower and lower. So. Overall, these benchmark results are super impressive and a big jump from the previous reasoning models. It will be very interesting to see how DeepSeek responds to this iteration. Are they gonna match it? Are they gonna surpass it? And if they do either of those things, what does that mean for OpenAI now? It can only be for so long that OpenAI escapes the clutches of free and open source. All right, now let's do a Python coding example. We'll go with the O3 mini high. And this is the script that I have, pasting it, pasting it in. A Python script for 100 balls bouncing inside a sphere. When the balls collide, they turn orange and remain visible for one second before being removed so that you can see that they're, they've collided, um, while the container and the scene remain active. Keep a counter for the balls removed, add a play and pause button. Okay, copying it. And there they go. You can see that the balls turn orange and more and more that counter increases while the amount of balls you see in here decreases. Let's see if we can pause it. We can pause it. You can see how the balls stay orange and like stay fixed there for a brief moment before disappearing while the rest of the scene continues. Cool, cool. All right, let's see how the same script does on DeepSeek. We want the R1 model and let's go.
Oh, it's finally done. Finally. Okay. That took so much longer than 03. Let's see what it's capable of. Huh? I get an error. Line 21. Okay. Is it missing something? But here it is. Okay, I don't see it in a sphere. I mean, I don't see the sphere. Oh, okay, let me zoom out. Okay, now I see the sphere. Cool. Hold on. It's going... So it's working, but it's going a lot slower. I wish I added like a speed bar here, but you can see like there was an orange set of balls that collided and got removed there. And there's another one. Okay, so it's working, it's working. It is moving a lot slower than the OpenAI script, but I'm sure that's just an easy speed setting. But yeah, okay, it works, they both work, but uh, DeepSeek was just like 10 times slower. And that's it. That was a comparison of O3 Mini and DeepSeek R1 in not only the Python coding example, but also the design choices, the pricing, the performance, and the safety. In my next video, I'll be doing a deep dive on how O3 was trained exactly, particularly focusing on deliberative alignment, which was the method that I had mentioned earlier. These here are just my chicken scratch notes that I'll be turning into a clean and pretty visualization. So subscribe to stay tuned for that if you're interested. Until then, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy testing out O3 and I'll see you next time. I'm